Hey everybody, Aaron here. I uh, just wanted to do an update video. I'm still working on getting the Monarch put back together. As you can see, I've got my uh, repainted yoke here, um, all pretty much ready to go. So what I need are to get the uh, brass or the bronze shoes and start assembling this thing. So one problem I have is that the end of the shaft is held on there with this little guy. It's a um, bearing lock nut. So it's got four slots in it that, you know, take a spanner wrench. Unfortunately, you can't use a spanner wrench because of the room in there. There's just no, no room to, to swing a wrench. So you've got to use a socket or a punch. Now, I took it off with a punch because that's all I could get there. Um, and somebody else had done the same thing. So it's, it got pretty chewed up. Uh, I've since filed it all kind of back to round and everything, but um, I don't want to just have to hammer this thing back on with no feel for how tight things are getting. And um, anyway, so I wanted to go ahead and uh, get a socket. Well, it turns out SKF makes a socket and it's 235 bucks for one socket. So I'm not one to, you know, skimp out on good tools, but this is going to be used hopefully once in my entire life. I can't imagine I'm going to mess with too many of these, um, these type of nuts. So buying that kind of socket just doesn't make any sense. Uh, so making one is what I planned on. Uh, I just went to um, O'Reilly Auto Parts and bought a cheapo uh, Titan brand Torx, uh, external Torx socket. And what I plan on doing is uh, basically just milling down everywhere except for where those four uh, slots need to uh, meet up with the socket and um, so anyway this is just going to be quick and dirty we're not going to spend too much time on it it just needs to fit over this nut and be able to turn it with a little bit of torque on it so let me zoom you in and see uh, exactly what we're dealing with here's our little lock nut uh, this is I think what they the technical name for it is bearing retaining lock nut or something like that. So this is a, a number two, number zero two. Um, so yeah, I think this will work well enough. I'm just gonna try and line it up to where the slots line up with kind of the lugs on the uh, socket here. The reason I didn't go with just a normal socket was for that, for that reason right there. Um, it just kind of ends up being a little bit better that you've got kind of extra meat there. So rather than trying to get too fancy on measuring things and whatever else, I'm just gonna take a Sharpie paint pen and just cover the top here in this Sharpie pen so I can see better. And then I think what I'm gonna do is just use a scribe to um, kind of give me a um, spot where I need to not cut. So all we're going to leave at, on the top of this socket is just the four little, four little slots. I'm sure I could even get away with just doing two slots, but uh, might as well do, do four. So I think I'll let this dry for just a couple minutes and then do another coat so it's white everywhere and then either use a, a real fine point uh, black marker to um, give us that square shape or um, just scribe it. So I'll bring you back when we're getting ready to um, mark that out. So while we're waiting literally for paint to dry, I wanted to take a minute and show some uh, very cool stuff that I got from Mr. Uh, Jim Deadman, uh, also known as, I believe his Instagram handle is James Deadman altogether. And uh, on uh, YouTube, he is Solid Plastic Hubs. Uh, dash James Stedman, I think. Anyway, I'll put it in, down in the description, but I just wanted to give a shout out to, to Jim and, and thank him for being so generous. Uh, sent me a couple of uh, oil cups. So he's taken a, uh, a child's uh, spill cup, I guess is what this is, or, or a spy, I'm sorry, a, a child's um, paint cup, and then modified it with some PVC just to uh, make a little Spillmaster type uh, oil cup. And that's basically the same idea with this uh, modified pill bottle style is you've got a uh, spill proof container there just from kind of ma materials that you already have around. So that's very cool. And then he was also super nice and sent me some CNMG 430 series or four series inserts. And I'm excited to give these a shot. Um, he said in a, a nice note that he also included 
that um, he'll find these things just on, on Facebook Marketplace or on uh, Craigslist or whatever and just can't pass them up and so he picks them up and then um, he's a, a nice guy and sends them to uh, people to, to try out. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun how small the YouTube community is and the Instagram community where you find people with uh, the same ideas and the same thoughts that, that you have without even trying. And um, Jim reached out to me and said, hey, you're, you're not doing, like I said in my video, I'm not doing anything that hasn't been done before with modifying my tool post or my uh, tools to uh, go directly on my tool post when I did uh, when I did this guy here, my go-to Kenda Metal uh, CNMG holder, so milled that dovetail in the back and milled a little bit off the bottom so that this guy just goes straight on the tool, tool post and uh, he gave me some, some inserts to try out. So these look, I look looks like I've got a, a Sandvik uh, Kenda Metal, I'm not sure what this guy is here, just depending on the color. Sometimes hard to tell, sometimes it's really easy to, to identify them. Uh, but anyway, it looks like some, some uh, high grade inserts there. And he said, these are all for uh, steel. All the coatings and chip breakers are meant for steel. So I'm excited to give those a shot. And thank you very much, Jim. I appreciate you uh, reaching out and offering to send me some, some good stuff that I can definitely use. Okay, so with our, our paint mostly dry here, I'm um, just checking it out, I set the the nut on top of this socket. And I think what I'm gonna do is only one of them is gonna be like most of a, of a tooth and the other ones are just gonna be kind of close. You know, they'll, they'll have some, um, some gaps in there. But again, I don't care. This is not like a, you know, 300 foot pounds of torque going on this nut to uh, lock it in place. So as long as it's, you know, just kind of grabbing everywhere, I think we'll be in very good shape. And I'm going to try the scribe, see if I can get down in on the edges there. Okay, let's see if I can kind of do this pointed at the camera. Okay, so yeah, as you can see, it's, it's not going to be that close, but it doesn't need to be. Uh, it's probably going to be some hand fitting here required, but that's not a big deal. This is just meant to be quick and dirty, so let's make it uh, quick and dirty. Uh, we'll go over to the milling machine and get set up to, I think I'm just going to use this three and a half inch end mill. This is for steel, and I think that'll give us plenty of maneuverability. I think a half inch end mill would work too, but it's just, it starts making it kind of close, so I'd rather go with something smaller that I can definitely not um, accidentally take a chunk out of uh, material I want left. So let's go over to the mill. Over here at the mill now, and just checking this thing out, this is the uh, thickness of the nut is about 315, so I think what I'll do is, is just shoot for about that. Um, my scribe marks are hopefully gonna be fine, so let's, uh, we'll raise the mill table up and then I'll use my uh, Quill DRO to determine how, how deep we need to be. Okay. 
We'll just start with a light cut. We'll do 15. See how it goes. Oh yeah, that should be good. Go another 35. And it takes us down to 302. So we'll take one final lighter pass to take it to 325. Well, got plenty of clearance. So I'm gonna come around to the back side here. Go back up to, we'll just do like uh, five thou just to get my line in the right spot. Or my, uh, reset my zero basically. Okay, my new X0. Yeah, it's pretty close. And then we'll come over here and set my Y0. Okay. Come back to X0. Okay, we're good. So, well, we just at least give it a little look here, see how close we are. Yeah, not too bad. I think that'll get us to where we uh, can hand finish it to workability. So one thing I did forget is we need to um, 
reduce the, the length of the tooth, if you will. Again, this is an eyeball job, so. Hey, there we go. Okay, now we can deburr it and take the sharp edges off and then I think we're done. Whole point of this is to be quick and good enough and I think we are there. And there we have it. I don't know what sort of movement you're supposed to have on a socket like this. Never owned one. Don't have anything to compare it to. But that seems pretty good. This, uh, this tooth that's closest to you there you can see is, is the bad one. The other three are pretty close. That one's way too narrow, which I figured that would probably happen. You know, I'm just measuring with the white paint and the scribe to transfer that pattern on there. So the fact that I messed up one, that one's a little thinner too, but the, these two right here look pretty good. So I think that'll, uh, that'll work out just fine. Um, just use this guy to thread that onto the, uh, the shaft and then bend over my little lock washer here into one of those four slots and it will be in place forever, hopefully. But yeah, not too bad. Good material to work with, I figured it would be. Uh, good, good grade of steel. Made a chip really nicely and finish is pretty shiny. Thanks for uh, checking that out, guys. We'll see you next time.